This is George Dunham. And I'm Craig Miller from Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. Tom Foolery, the head football coach of the Lollygag Wildcats, a 2A school in the Hill Country of Texas, has been a big part of our show on Dunham and Miller. Yeah, you know, we've adopted the Lollycats on our radio show as the official high school football team of the DNM program, and we've again chronicled their season on this cassette tape. Lollygag opened their season on the road in Lano against the Yellow Jackets. And as you might expect, Coach Foolery was pretty jacked up. Uh holding a pep rally right now, so we're going to reach Tom Foolery mm -hmm. at the pep rally, I believe. Getting ready for Lana. Hello? Coach Foolery. You got him. Hey, it's Dunham and Miller from the ticket in Dallas. How you guys doing? Good. Good. How you doing? I'll tell you, it's great atmosphere out here. We're ready and ready to go. Well, it sounds like everyone's getting ready for the pep rally, huh? i tell you what, these pep rallies are great things for the kids, for the community. They'll raise a goose bump on a frog's butt. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, the opener against Lano, and I guess there's probably no more exciting time for a high school football team and a coach, maybe outside of the playoffs, than, than that first kickoff. That's exactly right, fellas. We are looking forward to going to Lano, even though it's a long ride, and playing Gene Saucier's ball club. You know, they're 3A, so this will be an interclassification football game. Hmm. And we are excited about testing our football team against a bigger, faster, stronger school and team. But I tell you, we are ready to go. And our community, I guess you can hear in the background, is getting fired up. Or Friday night. <laughs> well, it sounds like you know. I, I used to play for Gene. Uh, we always called him Coach Saucier. Yeah, Saucier, Saucier. I thought it was some kind of French thing. <laughs> no, we always just called him Saucier. But well, I'll make sure I tell Gene you said so. Yes, sir. Well, what's going on? Have you had a good week of practice? I tell you what, we've had a great week of practice. Uh, we have never been so prepared for an opening game. We're excited about our offense, our defense, our kicking game, <laughs> and uh, you know. Uh, Ernie Trampese's offense this year is going to shock some people in the 2A level. Yeah, tell us about that. He's your new offensive coordinator, right? That's exactly right. You know, we got rid of Mike Shenanigan, and Ernie Trampese's come in with kind of a, a West Texas offense. <laughs> West uh, Texas offense. This is kind of a West Coast deal, but it's more, you know, instead of the sand and the surf that aired it out, this is more dirt and, you know, uh, just tough-notch football. It's more of a running game. But yet we ain't afraid to throw it with Buddy Boy Brubaker. However, he's a little, you know, he's still a little green around the gills. We hope to have him full speed. We got him a nutritionist, and yeah. we're hoping everything's going to be all right. But we're just looking forward to the trip. Now, now, what's wrong with Buddy Boy? I don't know. It may be some kind of anemia or something. I don't know. I don't know if his red blood cell counts down or what, but the kid looks like he's about to blow away. <laughs> he's not eating, huh? I don't know. He's going to eat good on the bus, though, because we are going to Lano and Hey, forget the Sonics and the Mickey Days and the Dairy Queens, baby. Raymond Rodriguez's mama has made us a big old batch of hot tamales. We got them packed in the cooler and about a six cases of big red soda pop. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great thing for you to eat before a game, I would think. <laughs> well, it's such a long trip. Uh, hopefully it'll be all digested. Right. <laughs> We're well, glad JoJo's graduated so we don't have to fumigate the bus when we get back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, JoJo Schnicknack. There was always a problem after large meals last year. Exactly right. Well, do you keep in touch with any of those kids? I know JoJo's gone and Bodie is gone. Uh, well, you... Bodie's not totally gone. He's not. Well, that's one of our problems this week. You know, Subji Musadakis will not play in week one, fellas. No, oh, no. And for those who don't know, Subji's one of your offensive linemen, right? That's right. Subji's a big old boy. He's a. Uh... We had to give him three paddles and three days suspension after he got into a fight on campus with guess who? Who? Bodie Lemons has been back. Oh, man. They released him from Huntsville, and uh, <laughs> he was he was back on campus chasing the girls around, and Subji went after him and ran his dingle in the dirt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Subji whipped him, did he? Yeah, he did, and I don't blame Subji because, you know, what, what Bodie did was uncalled for. You guys heard about that, right? No, we didn't hear about what he did. Well, see, Bodie came back to town about two weeks ago, and... You know, Bodie's got a little bit of an alcohol problem, and <laughs> Subji's brother, Meiji Musadakis, runs the local uh, stop and pop. He's the night manager there. Uh huh. And, uh, Bodie went in there and grabbed a couple of them Fort Coke 45s and didn't pay for them. Oh, oh no. man, shoplifter. Yeah, so Meiji Musadakis told old Subji Musadakis, and Subji Musadakis put the doctors on you know who. <laughs> <laughs> 
That'll teach Bodie to come around campus again. Well, oh, you know, plus this kid, Meiji Musadakis is a great guy. I mean, heck, you know, some nights after Mavis falls asleep, I go down there for a late night battle of Maylocks and come through Meiji's stock of periodicals, if you know what I mean. <laughs> He's got them all, does he? Yes, he even lets me break that plastic seal. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with that, by the way? Well, I think it's so, you know, you can't see the pictures. Right. It? I mean, you know, they have a bigger selection these days. But in the good old days, there was only Hugh Hefner's magazine. But, heck, you could thumb through that thing, memorize a picture, and then hold you over for a week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, let's get back to football. How about that? That sounds good to me, George. Well, what, what are the keys to beating, uh, beating Lano, you think? Well, I think our running game is going to have to establish itself and control the football. We've got to win up front. We don't have subject to block for Buddy Boy. He's not going to get a lot of protection. And by golly, if you look at the hollowed out of Buddy Boy, I just hope he survives the football game. <laughs> we are going to, you know, key on our running game and hope that uh, Damion can get the job done <laughs> and that we can control the football. If that, I, I, I've got a feeling, fellas, that we're in for a long night. Mm. Yeah, well, you're tough. We're a 3A football team that went to the playoffs last year. But I tell you what, it's just a good test, win or lose. It's a good test for our kids to strap it up, pin their ears back, and get after it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we can hear the crowd behind you, and obviously they're very excited. I, I assume here at the pep rally you're about to speak. Is that not correct? That's exactly right. Uh, it's, you know, we have great pep rallies down here, and uh, I've got to get up there in just a bit. Okay, well, give us a little taste. How about? Yeah, you gave us a taste last year of some of your motivational speeches. How about uh, a little preview? Well, you know, I'm just going to go out there first and foremost, and I'm going to tell the community here in Lollygag that we're as excited about their community support. We <laughs> appreciate the band and the pep squad and the drill teams and the Rotsies and the spirit groups <laughs> and the cheerleaders that have packed the buddy bags or whatever they call the cookies and lollipops for the football players. <laughs> We are excited that they are backing us as we embark on this new season. I'm just going to thank them first and foremost. Sure. And then I'm going to tell our football team, fellas, we've got to go out there to have any chance at all this week against Alano Yellow Jacket coach by Gene Saucier or whatever George <laughs> says it is, <laughs> that we have got to go out there and play football as if it's the ultimate team game because that's what it is, fellas. It's one for all, and it's one for all. And, I mean, we're like the three musketeers times 20. You may castrate one of us, but then, by golly, you got 59 sets of tough nuts still to crack. <laughs> That's a great way to look at it. I'll tell you what. I tell you, our kids are going to be ready to bullet up and go after it. Oh, boy. Well, it <laughs> hey, sounds listen, like I got to go, fellas. The band just started playing George Benson on Broadway for 15 years. That's been my cue. <laughs> captains and the cheerleaders just exchanged their moms and boutonnieres, so i got to get after it. <laughs> All right, good luck this week, and we'll talk to you next week. All yeah. right, fellas, take care. Thank See ya. You. All right, there it was. Did you really play for Coach Saucier at Lano? Yeah, I did, but he doesn't remember me. Well, that Lano game turned out to be a really tough opener for Lollygag. Yeah, the trip was tough, and so were the Yellow Jackets. Uh, took it on the chin on Friday night at Lano. Yeah. 48-2 to two, the final on that one. Hello, Fieldhouse. Coach Foolery. Hello, you got him. Hey, it's uh, Dunham and Miller from the ticket. Hello, fellas. Hi, hey. Coach. How are you? Good. <laughs> well, How's everything down there? Oh, it's been better. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the uh, game last Friday. That was a that was a tough one, 48-2. Not a good way to start the season. No, I guess not. Well, what the heck happened? Well, George, we got it handed to us, my friend. <laughs> Plain and simple, huh? That's basically all that it was. You know, we just didn't go out and get the job done. Our kids weren't ready to play. Uh, it was a disaster from the very get-go. Well, you know, we were following the score. You know, we keep up with high school scores from around the state, and we saw that you took a 2 nothing lead. Yeah, you know, we went down to Lano to take on the Yellow Jackets in their stadium, and, uh, you know, I know that you know Coach Gene Saucier. Saucier. Well, whatever. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not really his name as far as I'm con you know as far as I'm concerned you can just spell it with a four letter word oh my <laughs> I mean you know he's got this deal where he's got to set the tone on defense right and he wants to, to start the game playing defense but I don't want to toss 
Mm-hmm. And I like to set the tone on defense as well. So we decided we'd kick off and defend the south goal. Mm-hmm. Well, on the very first play of the game, George, he has his quarterback run backwards 20 yards out of the end zone to take a safety. Oh. We're up two zip. Now, I'm happy about that, but I tell you, that got my tail up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from there on, there was a lot of jaw jacking going on, and uh, we were screaming and yelling at each other from both sides of the field. So he, you took an intentional safety? He took an intentional safety to, so he could set the tone on defense just so he can get his point across. <laughs> wow. Boy, that's not good. I'm telling you, man, we was we – was, I thought our coaching staff was going to meet at midfield and get after it. I mean, we were yelling across <laughs> the field, but he's going to win that battle every time because I tell you, that Gene Saucier has got a 10-gallon mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, did the fact that you guys had a two- or two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour bus ride, whatever it was, did that wear you guys out at all? I, I don't think the bus ride wore us out, but we did get worn out. I told you guys that we weren't going to stop along the way at the, at the Dairy Queen or the Sonic. The Raymond Rodriguez's mom was kind enough to make us those tamales and pack us a case of big red soda pop, but... Hey, fellas, that did not cut it. <laughs> what happened? Well, those things were hot. I mean, it was like eating Japolino peppers and chasing them with a glass of boiling Tabasco sauce. <laughs> God, Yosemite Sam here all of a sudden. <laughs> I mean, you could tell that, you know, hey, the kids didn't look that good. And about the third play of the game, buddy boy Brubaker just got blindsided by their linebacker. Got the wind knocked out of him. I told you guys earlier that Buddy Boy just wasn't looking real good at it to begin with. Right. And then that plus the dinner uh, just took over, I guess. Uh, we go out there. The doc starts pulling on his waistband, trying to, you know, hold up his wind and hold up his waist and get his wind back. Well, I guess that hurt the matter because he took off his helmet right there and starts tossing his tamales right there in front of God and 733 Yellow Jacket fans. <laughs> <laughs> Made a big mess, huh? It was not a pretty sight. You know, he's embarrassed kids out there in the middle of the field. He didn't want anybody to see him, so he, he, he just started, you know, turning his head and chunking up right there in his helmet. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's tough. He's a brew baker. I, well, he didn't want to be seen, you know. The doc's asking him what his name is and where his brother is and what stadium he's at. And all he did was stare into that helmet, and the only thing he said was, Coach, when did I eat corn? God! <laughs> so I knew things was, you know, God. messed up with him. So we had to, we, we got him off the field. We went to the backup quarterback. And uh, uh. Well, let's just put it this way. After that, it was Molly, get the mop, bar the door while you're at it, board up the windows, and hide the youngins in the bathroom closet. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Lano did set the tone on defense, huh? Well, they oh, did, 48 to 2 shellacking it was and you know on the way home there wasn't a word said on the bus ride back and i'm not sure if that the kids were upset or just because i made them wear their helmets and their chin straps buckle up and their mouthpieces in all the way back <laughs> <laughs> their why'd, mouthpiece why'd you do that well i just wasn't real happy with the effort wow <laughs> well uh you know last year whenever the team lost and it wasn't that often but last year when you did lose the booster club was always on your back have you had any problems this week well we didn't have a real good meeting this week uh there were some people that were upset about the uh, tamales mm-hmm. and uh, they didn't think that was a real good plan and i guess i learned my lesson but you know jw Rutledge, he didn't have much to say uh, as far as my job status is concerned, after his little run-in with Miss Susie Silksockins, if you know what I mean. Oh, he no. A, he had a run-in with her, too? Well, that was a run-in that we speak it of. Oh, my. Oh. So the president of the Booster Club and Susie, wow. Well, that's, yeah, I don't want to say any more than that. Okay, yeah, let's move <laughs> on. Let's keep it on football. Yeah, how about uh, the uh, game now against Flatonia? Uh, well, I tell you, Flatonia is a good football program. Anytime you go there and play a team coached by W.D. Ford, you got to look out. Who? <laughs> W.D. Ford. I hadn't heard of him. He's been there forever. Huh. Uh, but uh, we're, we're not concerned about their football team as much as we are about getting off to a good start in front of our own home fans. Right. Mm. And, uh, you know, with about 24 hours to go, we got problems already with the home jerseys. No, no. Manuel's been screwing it up again. What? Subject Musadakis is back. You know, he served his three game, three day, three lick suspension, missed a one game. But uh, <laughs> it, it's going to be good to have him back. But Manuel couldn't get Musadakis spelled all the way across the back of his jersey, so he decided to go ahead and stitch it on in Arabic. 
God. <laughs> and and that's not the worst part. He decided to do it on everybody's jersey. Do you know what Leandre Damion Spinks looks like in Arabic? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to think about it. And then we got it all screwed up with our our new sponsorship up there on the front of the uh, jerseys on the left shoulder pad. We've got the, the swoosh. Uh -huh. Nike swoosh. Well, it's not the Nike swoosh. We can't use the logo, but we just spelled out the word S W O O S H. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a bad look. Yeah, so it's it's kind of too big. We're trying to get it, you know, tailored down. Well, what about Flutonia? They any good? Oh boy, you know they won last week, and we're real afraid they're running back and ran for 223 yards last night. Uh, last week, his name is Herky Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Herky Wheels. Yeah, Herky Wheels. Uh -huh. I tell you what, this kid's quick. If he's any faster, he'd catch up to yesterday. <laughs> That's fast. I mean, he's a good running back, and but I'm glad we got Subji back on defensive line. He can control the run, and hopefully things will go better because, fellas, it has not been a good week for me with last week's loss and then, you know, going to the doctor again. Oh, no. What happened? It's been a bad week. Me and Lou Holtz. What's yeah. wrong? Well, you know, I told you guys that I had the, the prostate procedure mm -hmm. uh, done uh, in the off season when I saw you at Cowboy Camp. Right. Well, I don't know if it's that or if it's some other kind of male problems, but uh, I've been having some problems below the belt. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if we want to hear about this. Well, if we were going to anyway. You know, uh, uh, I went to the doctor, mm -hmm. and uh, I told him that, that I had been... Well, I don't know how to say this, but things down there in the private areas have been turning orange. Orange? That's what I said, and that's what he said, orange. <laughs> he, he accused me of running around on Mavis. Oh, no, no that would never like happen. I hadn't run around on Mavis in 37 years. I ain't about to now at my age. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, maybe we ought to check Mavis. Uh, <laughs> I said, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with Mavis, Doc. In fact, you know, we don't. Uh, make whoopee as much as we used to as much as we should because she's already in bed by the time I get home from the office because you know guys I stay there watching game films and scouting and working hard with my coaches all night most of the time I get home she's already in bed so I just you know grab the remote control flip on the Playboy channel and grab a bag of Cheetos <laughs> <laughs> we found out one thing about coach foolery this year he knows how to make his team bounce back yeah, the kids were fired up, and the very next week, Flatonia became Lollygag's first victim of the season. Yeah, 28 to 14, so we're calling the field house right now. Hello, fellas. Yes, Coach Tom Foolery, please. Did you get him? Hey, hey. Coach Foolery, it's Dunham and Miller from the uh, ticket. Hello there, fellas. How are you? Great. Good. I guess you're doing pretty good after a win. Yes, sir. How about you guys? I know you guys are excited about them main green screaming eagles up there at Denton. That's, yeah, right. that's right. Hey, they beat Oregon State last week. Hey, congratulations to you. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, congratulations to you. Uh, talk about the win over Flutonia, and I know you needed a win playing at home and coming off a loss to Lano. Well, we went out and we executed offensively better than I think we have in the last two years uh, that I've seen our offensive football team. Right. We did the right things. We blocked down well. The offensive linemen graded out real well. And Leandre had one of the best games that our running backs had since Demetrius did a couple of years ago. Leandre Damion Spanks had 180 yards rushing and four touchdowns for us. And uh, wow. I tell you what, it's good to see him do that. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. uh, he had all four touchdowns, right? Yeah, and, you know, it's a big night for him because there were some college steps there watching him run. And, uh, you know, it's good for him because we had guys from uh, Cisco Junior College were there. Wow. And uh, Howard Payne. Man, <laughs> so uh, Big name you know, scouts. good for him because uh, you know he needs that college scholarship just like uh, Lashonda did. Because I tell you what, you thought Lashonda was poor, boy. The Andre Damion Spanks family is so poor. I tell you what, their supper most nights is fried water. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's not much there. <laughs> that deserves a shot of air. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, what else went well for you besides your running game? Well, I was just real pleased with the kids because they executed so well in every phase of the game, George. Of course, I'm talking about all three phases, offense, defense, specialty teams, <laughs> a kicking game, 
Raymond Rodriguez was perfect on his PATs at the point after touchdown. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was good to see the kids play well and fight through a lot of adversity because we sure had some in that football game. Uh-oh. We did. What happened? Well, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard up there in Dallas, but uh, <laughs> they were talking about uh, it's been all over the papers down here is the big fight we had. No, in really? school? Yeah, no, no. It happened during the middle of the football game. Oh, no. Yeah, well, Flatonia's got a kicker. Uh, you know, he's not one of these uh, these soccer-style kickers. Mm-hmm. He's uh, one of them big old defensive linemen that, heck, when he was playing peewee ball, they had to put X on his helmet because he's too fat to carry the football against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's, he wears one of them big Lou Groza boot, square-toed type deals on his on his kicking foot, and he kicks extra point. Uh, his name's Jumbo Riviera. Huh. Jumbo Riviera. Or Rivera, something like that. They call him Senior Cellulite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he don't care what you call him, just as long as you call him for supper. <laughs> so he's a big guy. I'm telling you, he's a big guy. He's got that big old square-toed uh, shoe on his foot. And Scoopy's playing special in team sports because he's quick out there, and he's going to block the extra point. He's our wide man, and he... He goes to block the extra point, makes a good dive at the kicker. <laughs> Missed him, didn't rough him, didn't block the kick. But while he's laying there, big Jumbo Rivera kicks him right in the head with that big toe boot. Oh, no. Oh, gee whiz. Yeah, so Scoopy's all discombobulated. His helmet's <laughs> turned off sideways. He's got drool coming from his chin. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, they had to carry him off the field. And the only thing touching the ground are his two toes. they dragging him off. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, it was a free-for-all after that. I mean, it was coaches and players, and, and everybody was getting into a fight. Our defensive corner, Bob Clown around, jump on Jumbo's back and was choking <laughs> him with his own chin strap. <laughs> I'll tell you, then me and uh, WD4, their head coach, we're going jaw to jaw right there at midfield. And Charlie Gann, I told you about Charlie Gann, our mean linebacker. He right. calls, you know, he wants to take up for me. So he goes after WD4, their head coach. Uh-oh, oh, no. That's I tell you good. what, he pulls his uh, Sands about coaching pants over his head and takes him behind the visitor stands and opened up to a whole can of whip ass on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's ugly. Yeah, a player did that yeah. to a coach. You don't want that kind of stuff no. going on. No, I, I, I think the UIL is going to rule on that sometime mm-hmm. uh, either later today or tomorrow, and I don't think we're going to have Charlie with us. Oh, <laughs> doesn't no. sound like it. <laughs> so well, that's for, not good. That hurts. Yeah, for our kids to suck it up after that and to show the intentional fortitude that they did in the fourth quarter, well, by golly, that made me real proud as a coach. Okay, wait, we've got a second here now, and I've always wanted to ask a high school football coach this. What exactly is intestinal fortitude? Well, Craig, that's uh, it may be a coaching cliche, but I believe in intestinal fortitude. Is it just guts? Not, you know, a lot of people think that may be what I get after a big plate of barbecue or tacos on Sunday morning, <laughs> but it has nothing to do with that. Intestinal fortitude is what we in the coaching game call sucking it up. <laughs> That's in the fourth quarter, baby, when you're dead tired and you got blood and snot and spit dripping off your face mask. That's finding a way to somehow pull it up from your loins, getting after it, and finishing out the ball game strong and getting it done. Yeah. <laughs> what our ball club did. All right, right, now tell us about this Winnie East Chambers. What's the deal with them? Yeah, that's on your schedule next. Well, you know, last year after the success we had, we said we was going to travel and play some inter-district ball games in our non-district schedule, and we did that with Lano, and we plan on doing that again with Winnie East Chambers. And first of all, I got a question for you guys. Hey, where in the heck is this Winnie East Chambers? <laughs> we thought you could tell us. I tell you what, I still got Manuel working on the map trying to find out where the heck we're going tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, we got a couple calls yesterday on the show, and they told us it was down by Beaumont, somewhere in East Texas. Yeah. Well, I knew it was over there some way, but, uh, you know, just as long as they get us there, I'm excited to play football somewhere in the state of Texas, but I didn't know. <laughs> hey, I'd have known that Winnie East Chambers. I thought Winnie East mean Winnie East, but I didn't know it mean Chambers, Chamber of Commerce over there in Beaumont. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a you got a good three hour trip ahead of you. So you don't even have your travel itinerary made out yet. You have no idea when you're leaving, which way you're going, or anything. Hey, listen, George, the coaching staff we're preparing for their football team. Right. We leave the you know 
uh, travel plans down to, to manual and he you know usually he's got that down because he's been driving to hondo and jerdenton from pearsall for 20 years but right. you know he, he's got to work out the little uh navigation plans for us well let's talk about winnie east chambers they're the buccaneers right that's right they're coached by grady bargainer <laughs> <laughs> really Who? coach grady bargainer yeah hmm. well what kind of team are they Heck, I don't know. I mean, we've got one film on them. I've never seen them before. I've never heard of them before. Hmm. Huh. But I tell you what, they're 2-0, and oh, and from what we've talked with some of the people in their district, they're a heck of a football team. Made the playoffs last year. In fact, won their district, won their district three years in a row. State semifinalists in 89, state finalists in 90, district champs in 91, <laughs> by district champs in 92, Regional semifinalists in '93 and '94, and the same dang thing last year. So, <laughs> well, now have you been breaking down that one piece of film? Well, I had Bob Klein around. You know, once I heard that they was a good, you know, football team, I had him go scout their film, and I said, Coach, just like I did last year, go into the film room, and I want you to break them down. Right. Break down Grady Bargainer and the Buccaneers, if you know what I mean. <laughs> And he went in there, and I said, Coach, don't you come out till you find me a weakness. Where can we exploit them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I tell you what, Bob Clown around in the coach's office in the film room breaking down for five hours. He finally comes up and said, Coach, I don't know if I can find one. I mean, they is a good football team, I think. I'm not sure, but I think their big offensive tackle, Buck Stobart's got a bull on his butt, but that's about it. <laughs> well, that's more than we ever wanted to know about Buck Stobart. Yeah, no kidding. Lollygag was 1-2 and two after their non-district schedule, and it was on to the district play against Hondo. Yep, and to find out how they fared in district play, please flip this cassette tape now. Dunham and Miller here again, taking you through the 1995 Lollygag football season. You know, after losing to Winnie East Chambers, the Lollycats started district play by beating Hondo, one of their arch rivals, and it was in this game that Coach Tom Foolery unveiled a new wrinkle in his offensive scheme. Remember, Hondo had that high-powered passing game. Right. Can't wait to find out what happened. Hello, Feldhouse. Coach Foolery. Yes, sir. It's Dunham and Miller. Hi, Mizzers. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Foolery. I'm doing good, fellas. Uh, excited to be 1-0 uh, and in district play. I'll tell you what, I couldn't be happier if I was eating fried chicken seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you pull that off? I mean, you know, Hondo had the great passing attack, and you were kind of scared about them. Well, we decided to uh, match fire with fire, George, and uh, <laughs> i tell you what, I've got to give credit to our assistant coaches, uh, Ernie Trapeze, they did a great job. You know, when we went against a passing offense, we knew we was going to put some points on the board. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we kind of learned our lesson from watching Texas A&M go up to Colorado and try to stick with the three yards in the cloud of dust. And so Ernie came up with uh, an alternative one-game game plan. Mm -hmm. And we decided to match fire with fire and and, you know, he came up with a game plan, and we won, and we threw the ball a lot, and uh, he called it the, the Scoopy-Doo. The Scoopy-Doo. <laughs> uh, Scoopy Justice, and that just means Scoopy-Doo everything. That's your wide receiver, <laughs> Scoopy Justice. That's exactly right. Uh, and Scoopy ha Justice had, had the greatest ball game that any receiver has ever had, first of all, because we don't throw a heck of a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, he set a school record with 23 catches in that ball game, including three touchdowns. Wow. I tell Man. you what, he caught everything but a venereal disease. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yes, that is good. Well, boy, I didn't think Scoopy had it in him. Well, you know, it was just good to see Scoopy succeed after the week that he had last week. Uh, I think I mentioned to you guys it was just a mess, and and it was good to see him overcome such adversity. Right. Walk in, fight through it, and have the game of his life. What exactly happened to him last week? I don't think I remember. Well, you know, I, I, Scoopy is uh, one of our brighter kids, and uh, he took the early SATs last Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, yet, halfway through the test, he was yanked out of the room and accused of cheating. Oh, man. Oh, no. That's a serious charge. Heck, yes, it is. And Scoopy, you know, he swears he didn't cheat. And so, uh, 
you know, and, and we didn't, we weren't real happy about the way the accusations started because it came from a kid who doesn't necessarily like athletes. He's one of our student hall monitors, uh, Mark Berman. Mm-hmm. Mark Berman. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. And so we didn't feel that everything was on the up and up. So, you know, Mark Berman said they found some crib notes and an SAT answer sheet with Scoopy's name on it. Huh. That he had ink writing on his hand, and of course, it, underneath his desk, they found a, a glove. A glove. A glove. What did that have to do with it? Well, well it was his receiving glove, and you know, <laughs> Scoopy's a wide receiver. He's got them tackified gloves, so there was some blood on it. Big deal. He's a football player. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay. So we decided to have. Well, we don't decide this. It's just part of the deal. Uh, they have a a student run hearing on the deal to see if Scoopy was guilty of the infraction. Oh, jeez. And so, you know, I, I told Scoopy he needs to find the best reputation that he could get. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, Lonnie Cochran, uh, one of our best young students, <laughs> decided to represent Scoopy at this hearing. Lonnie Cochran. Uh, Lonnie Cochran. Yeah, and now Lonnie's taking lots of heat because he, 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 his main deal that he told the, the jury of students there was that, that Scoopy had a lot of it in his mind, including next week's track and field meet. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't see where a race came into play. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, you know, I, the faculty gets to choose the 12 <laughs> students that will serve on the hearing board, the jury, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that the jury was stacked in our favor. Uh, because Scoopy's a football player. Let's just say it was made up of nine offensive starters, two defensive starters, and a kicker. <laughs> so you picked that thing. <laughs> well, yes, sir. I had a lot to do with picking the, the, the kids. And mm-hmm. let's just say it didn't take them four minutes to come up with a verdict. <laughs> <laughs> so Scoopy beat the rap, huh? Yes, he did. And, and again, it wasn't anything uh, inappropriate. I just went into that jury before they got ready to hear the case. And I told them, fellas, all you kids are players. Y'all going down to Divine next week. And all I got to say is, if you don't want to sit, you must have quit. <laughs> well, Coach Foolery certainly made his point there, and the Lollycats did have a big game next with the Divine War Horses. Yeah, Lollygag took care of business against the War Horses. Homecoming against Lavernia was next. You know, they should have killed Lavernia because Lavernia started a girl at quarterback and they hadn't won a game all year, but that wasn't the case. Right? They played Jordanton this week, right? Yeah. Hello, fellas. Yeah, hey. Coach Foolery, please. Yeah, this is Mr. Coach's office. You got it. Hey, <laughs> Coach, it's Dunham and Miller from the ticket up in Dallas, Fort Worth. Hello, fellas. How you doing? I've been better. Wow. Sounds like sounds like you're a little bitter after that 2 nothing loss. How's everything up there in Dulles? Well, <laughs> it's going okay. A little better than down there. Well, gosh, we, you know, last week we talked about Lavernia. They were 0-5 coming into the game. They had a girl playing quarterback, and we thought this would be an easy one for you guys, but you lose. Well, fellas, just to say this week was a classic example that coaches talk about of complacency. <laughs> <laughs> we just didn't get the job done. Our kids weren't ready to play, and... Uh, we weren't mentally prepared. We weren't physically prepared. They outplayed us. They deserved to win the football game. And uh, that's all I can say. Uh, you know, it's better to keep your mouth shut and seem like a fool than open it and remove all doubt. Well, <laughs> <laughs> what what happened offensively? How could you not score any points against Lavernia? Well, let's just say, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to necessarily blast anybody in particular. But let's say Ernie Trampezi's not on my, you know, top ten list right now. Your, Your offensive, offensive coordinator. coordinator. Yeah, if brains were leather, he couldn't saddle a flea. <laughs> I mean, our offense was somewhere between piss and poor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our offensive line was just pitiful. Huh. They, their defensive front four came through our offensive line quicker than Raymond's mother's tamales through my small intestine. Jeez. <laughs> Look at your digestive tract. Uh, although we did have some injuries to worry about. Really? Who got hurt? Uh, Kobe Heffer and Sub Jamusha Dockers, two of our big front tackles, mm-hmm. had a collision in the pregame warm ups because they out running crossing routes 
as receivers trying to warm up Buddy Boy. Oh, man. How'd that happen? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to ask Ernie Trampese. They're out there goofing around just because, you know, they're taking Lavania lightly. Mm-hmm. But they said, hey, we may even play receiver tonight. So one of them lines up on the left, one of them lines up on the right. They're looking back at the ball. They nail each other. And uh, they was out most of the game. <laughs> we had lots of injuries. Charlie Gann, our starting middle linebacker, suffered a groin pull in the first quarter. And, uh, you know, there's a big pile up there. And he comes out with a groin pull, and I didn't ever see him pull it, so I thought, you know, somebody else may have been pulling it, and I got a pretty good idea who it was. Who? Well, you know, the coach's daughter down there, Butch Porter Jr. Uh-huh. Oh, She's yeah. She's going both ways for them. And, she plays uh, both ways? I thought she just played quarterback. Oh, she also plays middle linebacker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is she any good? Uh, I tell you what, she, hey, they won 2 nothing, and she's the reason they scored. What do you mean she's the reason? safety. She scored the safety? Yeah. She she blitzed on a buddy boy and just pancaked him. I haven't heard a grunt that loud since the last time I passed a golf stone. Dang. <laughs> so, you know, Jeez. that made it 2 nothing in the third quarter. She gets up and celebrating, and she starts doing that. I don't know. It wasn't a snicky snack shake. It was some kind of lombata dance, and... It is a bad thing when you're playing against a girl, Bordy Boy, you know, who's just getting flat on his back, looks up, and he's got this girl dancing over him doing some kind of forbidden dance. <laughs> Buddy Boy kind of liked it. He got up and joined her in some kind of dirty dancing thing. They got flagged for excessive celebration, the two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Both ways, huh? Yeah, I tell you, it was an embarrassing night for our football program, for our fans, for our Booster Club members and parents, a homecoming. You know, Tyrone Shoelaces yeah. was there. Lashana Demetrius Thomas, some of the great players in Lollygag history, come back to see what kind of football program we've got going. And I tell you what, it was just flat out embarrassing. It was a difficult defeat, but the Wildcats started to turn their season around. Yeah, after that, they beat Jordanton 28 to 14. Then they killed Pearsall 50 to 2. And they beat Poteet in the next to last game of the season, but under really weird circumstances. When you did last Friday against Poteet, the strawberry pickers go down 14 13, but we saw in the newspaper where uh, the game was forfeited. What happened down there? And all my years of high school coach, and I have never seen nothing like this in my life, fellas. Yeah, we was up 14 13 with 5 minutes and 43 seconds left in the second quarter. It was a great football game between the two schools, but uh, they had to call the game because of illness. Illness? Yeah, you know, they had the, the Potate Strawberry Festival down there last weekend, mm-hmm. and Coach Tucker Rackley invited our, our football team down a day early to participate in the, in the Strawberry Festival. We went down early on Friday for lunch, and, and we went down to the festival, and our kids were having a great time. I mean... Have you guys ever been to a potate strawberry festival? No, no can't I can't say we have. Oh, they got everything. I mean, it, they got, you know, strawberries and cream and strawberry shortcake. And, I mean, everything is strawberries. We had some strawberry tacos and chicken fried strawberries and <laughs> liver and strawberries. And, I mean, everybody's strawberry was there except for Daryl. <laughs> and uh, we was... Uh, participating with their community in the strawberry festival and uh, we took some we had strawberries for breakfast lunch and dinner and uh then we got over to the football stadium we're playing the game and as i'm uh coaching on the sidelines i started feeling some churning down there in my small oh, intestine and Not i again. Had, uh, looked over my coaching staff and sure enough ernie trampage has got a little bit of sweat going on it's kind of a strawberry sweat <laughs> and I was like coach you feel sick and he said yeah coach I, 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 I must admit that I've got some you know some intestinal problems <laughs> and uh, so, so sure enough I look over my kids and my kids are all hunched over and feeling bad and I look over at their coaching staff and their bench and all their kids are hunched over and looked up in the stands and I knew something was wrong when the public address announcer started barfing up there on the microphone. <laughs> Jeez. So we look up on the stand, and every single one of the 1,200 people on the stands is getting sick. I mean, it was a giant strawberry barf fest. <laughs> oh, so everybody got sick from bad strawberries. Now, why wouldn't you just play the game the next morning? Well, what, what happened was it's it, the first time in... 
It's like 65 years, what they call out in Potita is a poison patch. Oh, really? Oh, oh man. Bad strawberries. Yes. And uh, so the referees, they said we, we, we will just cancel the game at this point, and the final score will stand. So we win the ball game 14-13. Hmm. Well, that's good. I mean, it's a win, right? That's somewhat controversial, though, I would think. Yeah, I would think so. It was just grosser than that, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was just glad to get out of there. And I'll tell you what, I will never eat strawberries again in my life except for maybe a bowl of Frankenberry cereal. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, now this sets up a showdown tomorrow night with the Mason Cowpunchers. They're 6-0 and in district play. You guys are 5-1. and Oh, and hey, this is our big game of the year, fellas. I don't know if y'all remember last year, but we've got a little bit of a of a war going on with Tudor Draper and his program. Yeah, you and Tudor got into it last year in that coin flip. Well, we got into it last week. Uh, you know, uh, with Tucker Rackley, he wanted to he wanted to continue to play the game out there on the middle of the strawberry field, and I was just like, you know, hey, he started jaw jacking with me, and he bowed up to me and said, Coach, you know, I question your intestinal fortitude to go ahead and finish the ball game, and I told him, you know, if he wanted to go one-on-one with me, we could do that, and I've had the same thing going with Tudor. Mm-hmm. And I respect the program. Uh, you know, they've got some great athletes, the 6 0 in district play, but I tell you what, we're not afraid of their ball club anymore after beating them 8 7 last year. I guess not. Yeah, that was a great game. Now, uh, this year, though, you go into it, I guess, with pretty high expectations. But last year, you, were, you weren't exactly cruising going into that game. No, last year we had some problems. Uh, we didn't think we could play. I mean, as I told y'all last year, they are a class football program, one of the best in the state. I mean, you these guys are so classy, they do step out of the shower to pee. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a good sign. <laughs> and, and, you know, if we can emulate their program, then uh, then, then we're, we're, we that's where we strive to be. They're the district champions. They're defending district champions. They're 6-0 in district play, and they've got Booger Johnson back. Oh, that's oh, right. Man. But now they've had some problems down there this week. Uh, we, we don't know the whole scoop, but there is some sort of problem with the well, principal. Well, they've got all kinds of distractions down there because their fans are real upset about whether or not they're going to have football in Mason. Why? Well, uh, they've been distracted because their principal, uh, Art Blodell, wanted to move Mason down to San Saba. <laughs> you can't move a high school team. <laughs> I tell you what, well, San Saba's offered them uh, some some booster club inducements, <laughs> some uh, new stadium, wow, and a permanent breakthrough Velcro breakthrough banner. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, tough. Uh, you know. <laughs> Ten Saba cow puncher? That is don't no, that. no, no, that, that is not right. What was that prince? Right ring to it, and plus they've got some of the best fans down there in Mason. I mean, <laughs> I don't particularly care for for Coach Draper, but their fans are great. I mean, they got the cow pound down there. And those- <laughs> we can tell you that Art Blodell did not move Mason. They stayed there, didn't go to San Saba, and the rivalry continued between Lollygag and the cow punchers. Yeah, it was another great matchup this year. We found out that Lollygag made the playoffs, but not by beating Mason. Two years with this wild tiebreaker thing. I don't know. Let's find out what happened, though. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yes. Coach Tom Foolery, please. Hey, you got it. Hey, Coach <laughs> Foolery, it's Dunham and Miller from the That's ticket. Yeah, I know. I've been listening on the radio. Oh, yeah, yeah down there in K. Lolly. That's right. The one place that we're syndicated is uh, in Lollygag, huh? That's exactly right. You got to do a great job in the morning. Well, thank <laughs> you, <laughs> thank Coach. you very much. How you like getting up early? I love it. Yeah, it's Boy, great. It great. Yeah, it makes us feel like a coach. Makes you feel like you're getting some things accomplished. <laughs> That's right. Well, tell us what happened on Friday night and how you got in the Dat Gum playoffs. Now, it was you and Mason, right, for the district title. Yeah, you know, we, was, we you know, it's good on one hand, bad on the other. We was extremely disappointed that <laughs> that we lost to our big rival, the Mason Cow Punchers, and head coach Tudor Draper, who's not one of my favorite people. <laughs> And we lost three nothing on a, on a on a game where we just did not have a very good offensive game plan, and we did not execute offensively. And fellas, let me tell you, the magic is over with uh, Ed Dimwitty. Oh, oh really? Yeah, your quarterback. It's kind of like a Disney movie, and he's Kurt Russell. I mean, something happened to Son of Flubber. I mean, he just couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? 
I did not know. He couldn't remember his plays. He was running, lining up behind a guard. He was running off the field to the wrong sideline. He, on one passing attempt, he even tried to throw lefty. Oh, no, no. Oh, boy. So, and quarterback, and I was like, what are you doing? He said, I just felt right. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to bench Ed Dimwitty now? Well, we benched him about halfway through the third quarter, and we put uh, Buddy Boy Brubaker in there, but, you know, he's still a basket case. He's in there in the huddle crying the plays. <laughs> you can't understand him, and uh, I don't know. We're going to have to start Buddy Boy this week in the playoffs, but uh, we're working on some psychological things right now with him, and hopefully he'll be okay. Okay, now how'd you lose the game? Well, boy, it was a good football game, defensive game plan. You know, defense wins championships, yes. Mm -hmm. And our defense has put us in the football game all the way until the last play of the game. And as the final score indicates, we lose 3 nothing on a 61-yard field goal on the last play of the game. 61 oh, yards. Gosh. Yeah, they've got a kid down there in Mason. Uh, maybe you've heard of his dad. This kid's name is Tim Dempsey. Oh, yeah, Tom Dempsey's son? Exactly right. You know, this kid, uh, <laughs> you remember Tom Dempsey with the, the, the New Orleans Saints got a 63-yarder yeah. record in the NFL. This kid kicked a 61-yarder. Hey, he's also got half a foot, but that's not the foot that he kicks with. It's not? <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of odd. That's his plant foot. <laughs> All right. I guess it works pretty good. Yeah, he putted it right in now. You know what? <laughs> well, now tell us now, okay, the loss then put you into a tie where you had to go down to a coin flip, right? Yeah, it was one of those math model, I uh, get out your abacus and your calculator dot divs again as far as tiebreakers and this, that, and the other. And I had to ba basically have a widget to figure out what's going on. But, again, it was a tie with us. And Hondo and Poteet, three teams tied for second place. Huh. So you got to flip those coins. Because Mason's district champion is being undefeated. Yeah, so we had a coin flip. So we down uh, Tucker Rackley and myself and Hondo coach Mike Permanner. <laughs> we met down at the Stuckies in Zunkerville uh, Saturday morning to flip for it. Where? Zunkerville. Zunkerville, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Never been down there? Yeah, never have. have. Have not. It's not much to see. Yeah, yeah. just a good place to <laughs> decide well, a playoff it's spot. Between our three, our three communities, and it's a good place for us to meet it. You know, 8 o'clock in the morning, grab some breakfast and do the coin flip. Of course, we met down there with the UIL, the University Interscholastic League Representative. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what happened? Well, you know, Tucker Rackley and I... And Mike Permanent, we draw straws to see who's going to sit out the first coin flip. And I, of course, draw this, the short straw again this year, uh, which has been real lucky for me. So they flipped for the first uh, elimination round. And uh, Tucker Rackley calls heads, and he wins. Okay. So Hondo and Mike Permanent are automatically eliminated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, then uh, Tucker says, uh, Coach? I'm going to give you the pick here on the second flip. Mm -hmm. So so I pick heads. And that's totally against everything I've ever done because everybody knows lucky tales for me. Right. right. That was what won it for us last year. Well, Tucker starts breaking out into this big sweat and his eyes are glossed over and he starts popping out some nervous popcorn pokes. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, fellas, I think he soiled his britches <laughs> right there. Why was he so nervous? Well, come to find out, that's what I said. I said, what's the matter, Duck? you mind if I have heads? And he said, no, I don't mind. And all of a sudden, I noticed him try to grab the, the coin and put it back in his pocket and break out another quarter. And I said, wait a second, right there, Mr. University Interscholastic League representative. <laughs> Check out that quarter. Sure enough, he had a two-headed quarter. No. Is that right? So they made him and Mike Perman to flip all over again with a, a regular piece of currency. <laughs> and uh, Mike Perman wins a flip, and then we flip with Mike Perman, and we win. So, baby, we're back in the playoffs. Wow. wow. Congratulations. All right, so who do you play? We play Yorktown. <laughs> <laughs> Yorktown. The Fighting Terriers. Where are you going to play them? Well, 
This is what I wanted to tell your listeners. I know that they support us. Uh-huh. And uh, we want to tell them if they're interested in coming to the game, we're going to play Friday night uh-huh. at 7.30 down in Ed Chester. <laughs> <laughs> you played there last year, didn't you? No, no last year we played down at Skidmore Town. Oh, there we go. I, I forgot about the hyphenated. Okay. Yeah, and we played Nixon Smiley at Skidmore Town and. Right. That's, right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. All right, so 7.30 Friday night. They have a pretty good team, I guess. They have a very good team. Let me tell you, you can get your tickets, uh, ticket listeners. $4 <laughs> they at the Booster Club all week, but it's going to be $6 at the gate. All right, so get them early. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what we want to do. They have a very good football team. Of course, you know their coach is Brad Shula. Who? Brad Shula? Brad Shula. He's one of uh, Don's boys. Hmm, I didn't know that. Well, he's not. Don doesn't necessarily want you to know that he's one of his boys. Really? Oh. He, didn't, he didn't grow up with the family. Huh. Jeez. <laughs> he's but, kind of the uh, black sheep of the family. Well, yeah, and, and he's, a, he's a good football coach. Don't know much <laughs> about him. I've never coached against Shula, but I'm looking forward to it. In fact, uh, if we go back, and I was looking back through some of the old uh, programs here, in the, in the archives here at Lollygag, and their lifetime, they're six and zero against us. Oh my! But uh, that, those were some days back before, and and we playing them in Ed Couch, which is artificial turf. So I don't think there's any way they beat us on turf, and I think their offense is totally outdated. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> hey, coach, good luck to you. Thanks for being with us this morning, and uh, it's always fun to be in the playoffs. Yes, sir. And we're looking forward to. To, to strap it up, and I won't tell the people down. Remember, it's four dollars. You can get it through the Boots Club if y'all want to call down here. Cause we expect those ticket listeners to back us here in the playoffs. But listen, I gotta go, buddy. Boys coming in with uh, Dr. Joyce Brothers, and we're gonna try to work out some things. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you get a work. Right, you called in the big names. All right, good luck, Coach. Uh, we've got Anthony Robinson's book here. We're trying to unleash the giant within. <laughs> That's Coach Tom Foolery. And Coach Foolery and the Lolly Cats went on to beat Yorktown, then went three more rounds in the playoffs before losing, unfortunately, in the state semifinals. Hey, but 9-5, and five, not a bad season, and a lot of starters will be back on next year's team. Yep, and the place to follow Coach Tom Foolery is on Sports Radio 1310 The Ticket. We'll see you next year with the best of Coach Tom Foolery.